I'm gonna give you the real reasons as to why Biden shouldn't step down as President of the United States. At this very important time of our lives, Joe Biden has no severe health problems. Why? Well, take a look at this video from a tweet in 2020. You can clearly see Joe Biden before he was president riding a bike during a time where he was the only candidate running to be president of the United States, meaning that he was fit enough to serve this country. And another clip from 2021 when he is president will prove that. So, are you starting to see the pattern with Joe Biden yet? Are you starting to see it? Because it is quite obvious. It is very, very, very obvious. And if you don't see it, then clearly you are blind as a bat. Okay? And last but not least, here is a clip of President Biden waving to the press while out riding his bike this year. Did Trump be on the ballot? Now, let me be crystal clear to you that Joe Biden is an avid bike rider and he has been riding his bike for his whole life. But if you people still think that President Biden is senile and that he's in obvious cognitive decline, then clearly y'all are wrong. Now, here's a video from a so-called expert on Parkinson's who described Biden having these problems. You noticed anything that, that gives you a red flag as, as a doctor? Oh yeah, I see him 20 times a day in clinic. I mean, it's ironic because he has just this classic features of neurodegeneration. I mean, word finding difficulties, and that's not, oh, I couldn't find the word. That's from degeneration of the word retrieval area. He's also overcome stuttering though. Could, could, that, could that be part of that too? No, this is not a palatal issue or a speech discrepancy, which is very different from a lemono dysfunction, actual word retrieval, where you pick a similar question or talk around the issue, plus the rigidity, um, monotone voice. Wait, go back to that, the rigidity. What do oh, you mean? loss of arm swing, standing up lordotically. You notice when he turns, it's kind of end block turning. It's not a quick turn. Um, so la la that's one of the hallmarks of Parkinson's is rigidity and bradykinesia, slow movement. And he has that hallmark, especially with the uh, low voice that said was a cold hypophonia, a small monotone voice like this over time is a hallmark of Parkinsonism. I could have diagnosed him from across the mall. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. If any Parkinson's expert says that they can diagnose him from across the mall, do not believe them. Here, here are some of the, the symptoms from, from Parkinson's. We just had him up there on the screen, if we can put him back. Um, what, what about the movement? Some people have, have, have pointed out the way he walks sometimes. It's not very fast, small steps. Is, is that something that, that is common in people who, who, are, who are battling a disease like Parkinson's? Yeah, it's a hallmark. Shuffling gait, we call that, so little steps. Uh, loss of arm swing from the rigidity. When we walk, we have a nice cadence. He, you notice he doesn't really swing his arms. And end block turning, meaning he kind of pivots around his foot. If you said, hey, President Biden, he would go like this um so, yeah but i also classic. know i also don't tell me if i'm wrong here it's very hard to diagnose parkinson's isn't it 
It's, it's not it's not simple. I mean, I, I've heard that it can be well, it's one of the one of the easier movement disorders to diagnose, actually. Right. But it's so clinic. There's there's very little other. And I'm a, you know, I'm a Democrat. I always say yeah, about this. Right. It's just like this guy is not a hard case. But I've had I've had relatives who have gone through issues, neurological issues. And, and I've heard that sometimes Parkinson's is not very easy to nail. It, it, you have to take a lot of tests. There's like, I mean, uh, it's early on. If you're just present with like hallucinations, that could be a variety of things or just the cognitive problems that could be Alzheimer's versus um, uh, Parkinsonism. And that becomes a little nebulous. But once you start manifesting the hallmark motor symptoms, right? Slow movement, rigidity, mass facies, hypophonia. I mean, if a med student did not pick Parkinson's, on the test, they'd be so, remediated. So let me ask you, you're a Democrat, you're a doctor. You sound like you're frustrated with what the White House is saying. Yeah. Why? Well, because, you know, I'm an American before everything. And I look at it and say, when I used to see Russia, Soviet Union, North Korea, when they just make outrageous things, you know, like when, when North Korea can't keep the lights on and they say, oh, you know, it was some faulty power thing. I kind of hate that kind of stuff. They had four years. My own party had four years to find, you know, this was a, a, a wreck in slow motion. And they had four years to find out of 350 Amer Americans, one person that could take the place. And here we are the day before school trying to do the homework and replace a guy who's got a neurodegenerative disease. Dr. P well, why didn't you go to fucking White House and tell him that he had Parkinson's yourself? You claim to be a neurologist and you are frustrated that the Democrat Party had four years to find someone that can take his place. Like, if you claim to be a neurologist who specializes in Parkinson's, why didn't you diagnose Biden then? Oh, I know. It's because you're not his personal doctor. So unless Biden's personal doctor says that there is something wrong with him to Biden himself, then President Biden could accept the results. But as of right now, President Joe Biden has no severe health issues. Also, here's the second reason why he should not be stepping down right now. Number two, Joe Biden is still the only politi politician who can beat Donald Trump. The reason why I say this is because there are no other candidates that can beat Trump that are st still running for the presidential election. Cornel West, I don't think he has what it takes to beat Trump because independents have a history of losing to either Democrat or Republican politicians easily. I mean, candidates. Like, I understand that he, that he has a lot of great ideas. Some of them, of course, that I could agree with, but he's not the one. He's not the one who can take down Donald Trump. Jill Stein has run for the presidential candidacy before, and I don't think she has it in her this time. And that's because the Green Party has never successfully beaten a Democrat presidential candidate and a Republican presidential candidate. So she likely won't be the one that's gonna beat Donald Trump because Trump is way too powerful for people like her to beat him. But we'll see what happens this time. I just think it's going to be more of the same last time. And Robert F. Kennedy, I don't think he will beat Donald Trump. Given the fact that he's part of a legacy family, he has a controversial history. One where I can point out to is where he is like somewhat against vaccines or he's fully against vaccines in general. Well, we knew it was working. We knew ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine were working. We knew that since 2004, because the NIH did this study that said hydroxychloroquine obliterates coronavirus. No, ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine is not effective against the coronavirus. It is not FDA approved for that reason. We knew what would work at that time. And what was the response? They, the response was they could not allow early treatment to occur. Why? Because there's a little known federal law that says if there is a drug that is shown effective, 
against a target disease. It is Ill a drug that is approved for any purpose. It is illegal to issue an, a, a emergency use authorization for a vaccine. So if they had admitted that hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin worked against coronavirus, it would have destroyed their whole $100 billion vaccine you know, enterprise. And that's one of the major, major problems with Robert F. Kennedy is that he thinks that the ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine are treatable for COVID-19 when time and time again, it's been proven that it is not proven to be treatable against it. So they had to kill early treatments and they went after stuff that they knew worked. They, this was the first respiratory virus in history where people would go to the hospital and they would test positive for coronavirus and be symptomatic. They were sick. And that's why they went to the hospital. And the hospital would say to them, there is no treatment. Go home till your lips turn blue and you can't breathe and come back and we will give you two things that are going to kill you. Remdesivir and hydroxychloroquine and, and, uh, and uh, uh, ventilation. So people still look at, in this country, at Anthony Fauci is a hero. And we were doing things a couple of miles from me in Malibu. There were police pulling surfers out of the surf and giving them thousand dollar tickets and telling them to go home, getting them out of the sunshine where, where coronavirus doesn't spread and lock him in their home where it does. That's one of the many major factors that puts me off about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And it's that Robert F. Kennedy thinks he knows more than Dr. Anthony Fauci, who, by the way, Fauci is an actual scientist and doctor who actually understands the science of the vaccines and how they work. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr., mind you, is just another name in the Kennedy family who happens to be following in the family footsteps to run for president, which is why he most likely will not beat Donald Trump, because most Americans like myself are really turned off by the things he says, including this clip here where he talks about the Holocaust. What we're seeing today is what I call turnkey totalitarianism. They are putting in place all of these technical technological mechanisms for control that we've never seen before. It's been the ambition of every totalitarian state from the beginning of mankind to control every aspect of behavior, of conduct, of thought, and to obliterate dissent. None of them have been able to do it. They didn't have the technological capacity. Even in Hitler, Germany, you could, you could cross the Alps into Switzerland. You can hide in an attic like Anne Frank did. I visited in 1962 East Germany with my father and met people who had climbed the wall and escaped. So it was possible. Many died truly, but it was possible. Okay. I mean, this is just insanity. I mean, you know, first of all, we should point out Auschwitz uh, put out a tweet, uh, you know, explaining that exploiting uh, the tragedy of people who suffered uh, were humiliated, uh, tortured, and murdered by this totalitarian regime of Nazi Germany, including uh, children like Anne Frank, in a debate about vaccines and limitations uh, during uh, the global pandemic is a sad symptom of moral and in intellectual decay. That from the Auschwitz Museum. I mean, jo John and Margaret, I, I, it just boggles the mind. There's, I think there's something wrong with him. Yes. There's no yeah. comparison. No, and yet we hear the comparison made over and over again by by anti-vaxxers and folks on the right. This and and of course, the, the, there's just no comparison in any sane reality-based world. It is not possible to get a new Democrat candidate to run against Trump in the next four months, and I'll tell you why it's impossible. Because doing that process will mess up the chance to beat Donald Trump. And the only way that Joe Biden is going to get replaced is if he dies or 
gets brutally assassinated by a gunman. That is one of the only ways that should happen. Anything else, like forcing Joe Biden to step down against his own will, is not the way to handle it very well. And no amount of our Democrat politicians who are secretly trying to get Biden out are going to change a damn thing. And no amount of the Democrat politicians who are publicly trying to push Biden out forcefully is going to change a damn thing. President Biden made it very crystal clear that he is not going to step down from the Oval Office unless the Lord Almighty tells him to. If you can be convinced that you cannot defeat Donald Trump, will you stand down? With the friends of, and if the Lord Almighty comes out and tells me that, I might do that. Well, it, I mean, on a more practical level, Washington Post just reported in the last hour that Senator Mark Warner is, is assembling a group of senators together to try and convince you to stand down because they don't think you can win. Well, Mark is a good man. We've never had that. He also tried to get the nomination, too. Mark's not. Mark and I have a different perspective. I respect him. And if... Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi come down and say, we're worried that if you stay in the race, we're going to lose the House and the Senate. How will you respond? I, I go into detail with them. I've spoken to all of them in detail, including Jim Clyburn, every one of them. They all said I should stay in the race, stay in the race. No one said, none of the people said I should leave. But if they do? Well, it's like, <laughs> they're not going to do that. You sure? Yeah, sure. Look, I mean, if the Lord Almighty came down and said, Joe, get out of the race, I'll get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. I mean, these hypotheticals, George, if, I mean, if but, all... But, but it's, it's, it's not that hypothetical anymore. I, I, I grant that the, they have not requested the meeting, but it's been reported... Well, they, I've met with them. I've met with a lot of these people. I've talked with them regularly. I had an hour conversation with Akeem. I had more time than that with Jim Clyburn. I spent time with many hours off and on the last little bit with Chuck Schumer. It's not like I had all the governors, all the governors. I agree that the Lord Almighty is not going to come down, but if, if, if you are told reliably from your allies, from your friends and supporters in the Democratic Party, in the House and the Senate, that they're concerned you're going to lose the House and the Senate if you stay in, what will you do? I'm not going to answer that question. It's not going to happen. Bottom line, President Joe Biden already has made his decision to do just that. And only he can make his own decisions about the help from the U.S. Congress suggesting that Biden should step down. Nor do I think Joe Biden should step down with the help from the American voters who may or may not say that Biden should step down for re-election. I don't see Joe Biden stepping down at all. In fact, I only think that Joe Biden should continue his presidency for four more years. Because I'd rather have him than someone who said that he will be a dictator on day one. Thank you.